Welcome to another Cyber Omelette, and some may say I am the Cyber Omelette. In this video, we are going to be talking about Caesar's Cipher, which is the earliest known form of encryption which Julius Caesar of ancient Rome fame used to encrypt his military messages when he was a general. And, as far as we know, they never were intercepted and decrypted. I learned about this technique in The Codebook by Simon Singh. I'm not getting paid to endorse this book, I just honestly loved it. It starts with ancient cryptography, and while I was reading those chapters, I started writing up some Python code, which I'll be introducing to you today. Because the code breaking and encrypting is all sandwiched in history, it really makes a lot of sense to see how it has progressed from Caesar cipher to, you know, the future which will be quantum encryption. So what is Caesar cipher? Uh, it's basically a mapping from the alphabet, 26 letters as we know it, to what is called the cipher alphabet, which is the same thing, just shifted by a certain number of characters. Uh, in the code I write, the way this works is when you give a shift distance, for example, of three, it will knock the first three characters off of the alphabet. So A, B, and C are gone. It starts with the D, that carries right on through to Z, and then A, B, C are tacked on to the end of the cipher alphabet. So in a shift of three, the encryption for the letter A becomes D. So let's consider a longer example. For example, with the phrase, hello world. Using this cipher alphabet, we can see that the letter H maps to K, E maps to H, L's become O's, O becomes R, W, Z, R is U, and D is G. The encrypted form of hello world is K-H-O-O-R-Z-R-U-O-G. There you go. So, let me explain very briefly what the four parts of this code I'm about to write is going to do. Uh, we're going to start with just laying out our program to receive inputs and just print what we intend to do with these. Uh, the next part, we're going to write a class called Shift Cipher, uh, and in the initialization of that class, we will construct the Cipher alphabet. Then we will implement Encrypt, and finally we will implement Decrypt. I would also like to say you might hear some snoring or snorting. That's coming from my dog, who is asleep in the same room, and I don't have the heart to kick it out. Uh, so hopefully it's not too distracting. She is very cute. A reminder, what we want this program to do is get a message and then encrypt or decrypt it. Uh, and we'll be rotating the alphabet by whatever value we provide. Uh, so I'm going to leave the rotation hard-coded into the Python file, but let's take the phrase and the action in as command line arguments. So that'll be done using the sys.argv list, which is a list of all the commands that get sent following uh, the invocation of our program on the command line. So I'll start by adding this if statement here, which checks to see if our Python file is being run directly or whether it has been imported. Let's just print sys.arg and here I will run the program. Arg view, we see it's shift.py. Let's add test, test one. Now we see it's shift.py, test, test one. So we will pass the values that we want the program to have using this mechanism. Uh, we'll make the first value represent the action, which will be encrypt or decrypt and the second value will represent the actual message. So let's add that here. Action one, message three, at two. Just add a quick check here to make sure there are enough values. And say, got our action and our message to find if action equals E, say else if, action, we'll say decrypting, so print. So now we should be able to run the program and we'll at least get output indicating it knows what it's trying to do. Ah, there we go. Else if, action, ah, forgot. In Python, it's elif, not else if. Phrase is not identified. Ah, I called it message. Phrase. 
is here. Encrypting message one. There we go. And our print sysrv is still down below. Okay, so what we've got here is a basic program that can be run which routes the encryption to one branch of an if statement and the decryption to another. Now let's actually get to the interesting part, which is where we write the class for Caesar's cipher. Uh, in this case, I'm going to call it shift cipher because I spell Caesar wrong all the time. And it is also known as the shift cipher or the rotation cipher. So we'll define the initialization class here and take one optional parameter, which is the number of steps to rotate the alphabet by. So I'm just going to call that large n. I'm going to give it a default value of 13 uh, because with 26 letters in the alphabet, if you apply the N13 shift twice, you actually recover your original message. And that's kind of cool. So we'll make that the default value. Let's give a member variable here, which is a list called the cipher alphabet. Uh, so we'll make it an empty list. And up here, I'm going to make a global declaration of the 26 letter alphabet. So now we've got our standard alphabet, as I'm sure you know it well. Okay, so we've got our alphabet defined above, and we've got an empty cipher alphabet. Uh, what we actually want to do here is assign, we'll start by assigning a subset of alphabet above, and we'll use the colon delimiter to slice. So we'll take the nth index, colon, which will take everything from n to the end of alphabet. So right now, cipher will be a subset of alphabet above. The next thing we need to do is take everything from 0 to n and attach that to the back of the cipher alphabet. So to do that, I'm going to use something called extend, which is a built-in capability on Python lists, which allows you to add another list exactly to the end. So for this, I will take alphabet. And now I'm going to go 0 to n. So let's do a test here where we just print the length of our cipher alphabet. And it should be 26. Let's see. That's right. We need to initialize the shift cipher class if we actually want this to be output. Cipher equals. Try that again. Yeah. So cipher alphabet length is 26. That's a good clue that our cipher alphabet is working as we hope. I'll delete that login. Let's start by encrypting. So, member function, and we'll pass in the message we want to be encrypted. So if you think about how this encryption takes place, uh, what we're going to do is just walk letter by letter and map the alphabet letter in the plain text message to the encrypted letter in the cipher alphabet. And we'll just add that to a new string, which we return. We'll start with an empty string, which will be the message we return. I'll say return encrypted. We also have a lowercase alphabet. So I'm going to take message is equal to message dot lower. So that takes the input message and just makes it all lowercase to make sure all the letters actually get encrypted. So now let's write a loop. So for letter in message. Now the first thing we want to do is check that the letter actually exists in the message. So we will say if alphabet.count for our letter is greater than zero, that means it is contained in there, let's check the letter index. So we'll look up where that letter falls in alphabet by using dot index of letter. Now all we have to do is add the corresponding letter from the cipher alphabet to our original message. Say encrypted plus equals cipher alphabet at index. Hold on, I actually need to encrypt this. Let's use our cipher dot encrypt phrase. Now this should give us an encrypted phrase. And it is Z-R-F-F-N-T-R. But if I say message one, you can see the space disappears. The reason for that is that when we check if the alphabet contains the letter which we're trying to encrypt, we only add the cases where it does. So if I 
do things that are not contained in the original alphabet, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you see this encrypts to empty. Uh, so what we need to do is add one more branch to this, where we simply add the characters that aren't in the alphabet directly back to the message. So do this, do it encrypted plus equals letter. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 comes as plain text, but if I do 1A, 2B, 3C, you'll see the letters get scrambled. So it looks like our encryption is working exactly as we hoped. Now we need to do the decryption. So, oh, I spotted a typo. Encrypt. Encrypt. There we go. Now we need to do the decryption back on track here. So let's take the same signature as encrypt. Decrypt is actually almost exactly the same as encrypt, except when we look up the letter index and when we add a letter to the output message, we need to change the two alphabets that we're using there. So I'm just going to copy this whole function above, paste it, rename this to decrypted, rename decrypted, decrypted, return decrypted. Now it is an exact copy of an encrypt above, but with one variable renamed. So when we come through and there's a letter, we want to find the index in the ciphertext. So here, letter index, I'm actually going to use self.cipher alphabet, which will give the letter index. When we add it to the message, we want to just use the normal alphabet to reconstruct this. One more copy paste. Okay, now we've got decrypt. Now, this should return message one. Yes, and it does. So, that is wonderful. So right side we will decrypt, left side, let's encrypt. And let's say all your base are belong to us. Ooh, now let's decrypt that. All your base are belong to us, we got the message back. This is just using the default value. If you want to use a rotation other than 13, we'll just add a variable here, distance, and we'll set it to three. And then we'll just pass that into the constructor of our cipher. And now, we do all your base are belong to us. You can see that this has changed, but the decryption code, which is still using the same program, should still work. All your base are belong to us. There we go. Now just to show again that this is working, now since we're rotating by three, if we type the alphabet, you can see the encrypted form is actually just the cipher alphabet which we end up with. So because we said three, A, B, C, the first three get cut off. We start with D, and you can see when we get to Z, it just starts counting A, B, C again. Yeah, that's a pretty good clue that our program is working as expected. There you go, you've got some working Python. I hope you feel great knowing that all of your secrets are safe. Send this code to your friends and you can send them encrypted messages and they can decrypt with the same piece of code uh, and no one will be able to tell what you're talking about. That's pretty cool if you ask me. I would also like to say, since this is my first Python video tutorial, if you have any feedback about if it was useful to you or how I could make it more useful, I would really appreciate that. Uh, Python's a really powerful tool and I would really like to help people get using it. I would also like to get your opinion on one more thing. Do you think Caesar's Cipher or Caesar's Salad has had a greater impact on the modern world? So if you could let me know about that as well, that would be great. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.